Welcome to today's Urban Conversation. Today's discussion revolves around gender stereotypes and issues associated with such stereotypes and about how parents can raise their children into resilient and thinking young adults not influenced by such typical imagery, perceptions and opportunity definition. Today's guests are Priya Patel and Mahesh Natarajan. Priya is a researcher at the Indian Institute of Management in Bangalore with a focus on health, gender and violence. And Mahesh is a counsellor at Inner Sight and an author of life-based book, Pink Sheep. Thanks to Vivanta by Taj and Shopper Stop for supporting this episode. The way we socialize our children uh, from when they are born till, uh, till they become adults in terms of everything from uh, how they dress, what they choose, what they eat, what uh, brands they uh, buy and all of that uh, not only um, stereotypes them in terms of how they are as boys and girls and, but also ends up frustrating their own sense of potential. So in terms of if a, if a girl for example uh, was especially interested in um, wrestling as a, as a as a one particular instance uh, she may not have been allowed to do anything of that at all and could end up being a nurse or whatever the parents insist on being so there's a certain sense of wasted potential in, in addition to the degree to which uh, she may be subject to violence uh, either which way and i think is is um there is that push of forces, forces that are at play that perhaps, mm. um, you know, force a, a young girl into conforming to a certain sort of gendered role. But then there's also something within her, I, I imagine, where, um, you know, that, that where a lot of these notions around what is considered feminine becomes internalized, where, you know, if I um, read a book, will I be perceived as, an, as being a nerd? Or if I want to play in the sand with the boys, will I be perceived as being a tomboy? So it's, it's a very dynamic kind of thing that operates where signals are sent out by the environment and then the child then kind of takes those notions and internalizes them and then sends them back out and kind of projects this mm -hmm. image of you know, who she is which may not necessarily be the person she wants to be. Mm. Obviously, the biggest influencers on children are parents. How do you think they can change things at home and in their relationship with their children, um, you know, in sort of slightly altering the impact of such notions, of such ideas? It's a process of constantly cultivating the sense of mindfulness and not just um, responding with a very sort of knee-jerk reaction like why are you crying you know don't be such a crybaby or you know is that how you want to handle it or I think you may like specific like in this case would are you referring with, to like boy children with girls and boys right okay. I have one of each and it takes real intentionality to kind of cultivate this sense of okay, my son doesn't have to be stoic just because he's a boy. He can communicate, and I should try to encourage that. And my daughter doesn't always have to be histrionic and emotional. She can learn how to control that and channel that in a positive way. So I think there's a lot of work that I need to do as a parent. And, um, and a lot of it, I think, does come down to communication mm. and just cultivating those communication skills. And language as well, I think. Absolutely. I think taking on from what uh, Priya is talking about, uh, the mindfulness of the parenting in terms of the intentionality between what kind of messages they are uh, trying to uh, uh, get their child to inculcate in their value system is one part of it. A second part of it is what they model as uh, a man and a woman. Uh, or as two partners in terms of how they respect each other, what are their gender roles and children learn uh, also by observation or mostly by observation really and especially in all these social cues. Mm -hmm. If the uh, woman in the house is expected to always clean up or always cook or always uh, fold the clothes or these gender roles have become very uh, specific then the children will pick up on those cues. So uh, I would think that parents uh, looking to bring up their children in a more uh, liberal, uh, creative thinking uh, 
kind of an attitude would also need to be mindful of how they behave with each other. Now, both of these aspects are more from um, an internal point of view in the sense of what's happening inside the family. There's a lot of influences outside the family too. Right. You know, you, you step out of the home, uh, whether it's comments about, oh, women drive like this and men don't ask for directions, or stepping into a mall and here's the boys' section and there's the girls' section, there's pink and there's blue. Or, you know, video games, there's a whole range of things. You know, how do you start to address those kind of differences with children? For me, it's really important to instill in them a sense of why do we say these things? Where does this come from? It may be true or may not be true. To me, it's besides the point. I think the sense of asking yourself, you know, are these things actually true? For me, is a big um, mm. is a big lesson. If they see somebody at at a mall and um, the husband is, I, they see a couple and the husband is yelling. This has happened before. We, you know, when we've been to malls and the husband is yelling at the wife and, um, you know, they'll I I I think they will ask why is that happening and not so much. They won't slip into um, an immediate judgment of the situation. They'll question what's happening before them. And I think getting children to kind of um, develop that internal trigger and not just taking what they see or taking what they hear for granted or as the truth, for me, is important. Yeah, I think I mean, it would be uh, really awesome if all parents brought up their children with a spirit of inquiry and uh, critical thinking. But the fact is that in our society today, there will be parents who want their children to uh, have a particular uh, way of life. And that can be in conflict with uh, this kind of uh, uh, critical thinking, uh, free uh, thinking uh, attitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and there's a lot children... of fear associated with that type of yes, free thinking yes, too. Yes, you know, yes. it's like, okay, so you start thinking freely and you question all these things yeah. that we grew up with and we why, live why, by. Why, why, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, and when young children who are uh, being brought up with, uh, with this kind of an environment or in this kind of an environment, go out into the society and meet people who uh, may be quite against their way of thinking, their way of being and what uh, their family believes in uh, will likely start facing violence of ideas if not actual physical violence from that young age and so parents will then have to be able to bring up in their children the spirit of resilience to be able to face these kind of uh, critical uh, you know criticism if not critical uh, pressure on them to conform. But I think also there's another aspect to this, right, where let's say uh, in some sections of, of our society uh, there might be negative repercussions of being so strongly what you want to be, mm. right? And then there's the other aspect that comes in as to how do you deal with that then? Mm. You know, it's, you can grow up with certain notions and values um, and you can be completely comfortable with them, but putting those in exactly that the same, like, this is me way in some people's faces might not go down so well. Absolutely. And uh, that's where uh, what Priya was saying earlier about uh, bringing up in that child a sense of inquiry and a sense of asking where these attitudes come from, even in the society, and to be able to have some degree of tolerance for an alternating viewpoint uh, is essential so that uh, uh, in as much as they are uh, being activists for themselves in how they express themselves, they do not assume that that is the only way to be. Mm. And uh, that uh, tolerance of uh, difference is something which is also part of the um, parenting thing that uh, will become necessary if you are bringing up a child to be a critical thinker. So I think when we talk about gender roles, whatever a girl or a boy child chooses, to be interested in, you know, whether it be a boy who wants to paint and draw or likes pink ponies or a girl who likes trucks or whatever. I think it's important for us as parents to really encourage that, encourage the choices that the child is making and, and um, sort of support that sense of agency because I think that builds into self-esteem and then self-esteem over time leads to a more resilient child. So. To kind of break it, break down the abstractness of resilience, I think it's important to think about choices and helping a child to be proud of her choices and take ownership of her choices. And if it means she wants to be a doctor when she grows up or she wants to be a ballerina, you know, we should embrace either. 
and hopefully that'll re- lead to you know a tougher more resilient child in the future fantastic having you on the show and thank you for such a meaningful discussion thank you thank you thank you um, just to wrap it up a few things there that parents can uh, bear in mind mindfulness about gender roles uh, teaching um, or encouraging a spirit of inquiry encouraging critical thinking encouraging and facilitating resilience and tolerance good luck with parenting join our mailing list at chaiwithlakshmi.in forward slash subscribe and keep in touch with us on facebook twitter google plus and pinterest